Call this meeting to order the Kern Council of Government's Transportation Planning Policy Committee. And we'll start with Pledge of Allegiance. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. I own Couch. Yes, here. Helton. Here. Blades. Present. Crump. Here. Warney. Cryer. Here. Brock. Here. Crichton. Here. Para. Prout. Yes. Reyna. Here. Flores, Smith, Bob Smith. I am here. Phil Smith, Vasquez. Here. And Mario. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, and request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Are there any public comments? I see one. <clears throat> My name's uh, Francisco Martinez. My address is 7136 Wildflower Street. Um, that community, that address is actually in Mettler. We have absorbed many years ago by the 93313 zip code, if you're wondering why. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually uh, president of the Mettler County Water Board, and um, I was introduced uh, to these meetings by my coworker, Ron Kowalskis, and um, I'm uh, trying to make myself presence known because, um, as you all know, the casino is going to be built right next to Mettler, and our concerns about um, traffic and basically the community wants some kind of input. So I've already met with uh, our uh, staff from our water supervisor, Zach Scrivener, and um, he told us, we, got, we met, I think, with LAFCO. Um, they mentioned these meetings, and I introduced myself to Mr. Brock, who's in charge of our district, and Mr. Ball. So, uh, and they basically told me there'll be public hearings in the future, you know, so our, the public uh, Mettler can address any concerns with traffic. So I just wanted to introduce myself and you'll be wondering why I'll be showing these meetings. That's part of why. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public statements? Yes, sir. Thank you, Thank you everybody. My name is Tony Renteria. <clears throat> I am the Education Outreach Coordinator at Bike Bakersfield and the Program Manager for the Current Active Transportation Alliance. <clears throat> The Kern Active Transportation Alliance will be attending seven Christmas parades in Kern County this December for our annual, or excuse me, for our monthly community rides. We'll be in Kern River Valley, Shafter, Lamont, Wasco, Arvin, Delano, and Oildale. We'll be riding our bicycles, decked out in Christmas decorations in these parades, and we'd love for you and your community to join us. If you need a bike, or a bike repair, or even e-bike, feel free to stop on by, by Bike Bakersfield, and we'll check it out. For more info, on, uh, for more info, reference the flyers I handed out to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Seeing none. 
We will move to consent agenda opportunity for public comments. Any public comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none, would any member like to pull an item from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I'll take a motion. Second. Roll call, please. Okay, I can hear you now. It's, it's hard to hear you through the mic. Oh, sorry. Oh. It would help if I had the mic on, Kyle. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> Crump. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Prout. Yes. Raina. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Vasquez. Yes. And Mario. Yes. Thank you. Caltrans report. We'll take uh, District 6 first. Thank you. Uh, my name is Caleb Brock. I'm the Office Chief for Transportation Planning, filling in for Michael today. All right. Uh, first update is the Sustainable Transportation Planning Grants for fiscal year 23-24. The grant application guide and call for projects was released on October 5th. There's uh, a little over $54 million in grants uh, funding available. Of that, $32 million will be available for the second cycle of the climate adaptation planning grants. On October 26, uh, District 6 partnered with District 9 and held a hybrid grant uh, application workshop. Applications are due January 18th. And if uh, you would like uh, District 6 to review a draft application, we ask that you to submit those to us by December 15th. The next is the State Route 99 uh, CMCP update. So the Managed Lanes workshop took place on October 20th at 2 p.m. at District 6 office. A consultant led two hour hybrid event for Caltrans and MPO staff with a District 6 focus, but also included District 3 and District 10 attendees. And the workshop was well attended with 12 in-person attendees and over 30 virtual. The workshop included breakout sessions uh, to gather input from the North for District 3 and 10, as well as the South uh, segment for District 6. The presentation slide workshop uh, were sent out to invitees earlier this week. Um, we did run short on time, so we will be having a follow-up workshop um, focusing on the northern part of District 10. Um, and cities, counties, and transit agencies will also be invited, uh, so there will be some review of the District 6 segments uh, as well as other information and consideration. The first of 24 monthly update meetings um, with the consultant team and the COG directors took place on November 2nd. Meeting notes and materials were sent out to the meeting attendees earlier today. Monthly update meetings are currently scheduled for early afternoon on the third Thursday of every month. And lastly, the uh, draft public engagement plan is expected to be provided to the MPOs and member agencies later this week, and there will be a two-week turnaround uh, for review after that. And so a couple of project updates. So the State Route 155 emergency project, a commuter alert was sent out on November 9th. An additional slope repair has been identified just east of Alta Sierra. Work was scheduled to begin on Monday, November 13th. Uh, this operation is expected to last approximately two weeks. And one lane will be remain open to traffic during the operation, utilizing a flagging crew through the area. Next one is the Bakersway, Bakersfield Freeway Connector, uh, 5899 modified interchange. Uh, the contract is uh, expected to be completed uh, fall of 2023. Um, 
The status is 95% complete. All the facilities are fully open to uh, traffic, and there's just a few miscellaneous punch list work items that need to be completed. Next is the old US 99 White Lane South, uh, State Route 99 Rehabilitation Project. Uh, the project is currently in construction, about 95% complete. Uh, expected completion of the road work is early December 2023. Um, next is the Santa Fe Roundabout, the project located in Shafter at Santa Fe Way and Los Angeles Avenue intersection. It's currently in the PS&E phase, RTL targeted for June 15th, 2024, anticipated to begin construction in the spring of 25. Sorry. Uh, next is the State Route 46 Conventional Expressway Segment 4B. Uh, this is to convert two-lane conventional highway to four-lane facility. It's in and near Lost Hills from uh, just west of the California Aqueduct Bridge to 1.4 miles east of Lost Hills Road. Uh, Department of Water Resources representative has sent a letter accepting the conditions for work on the field and are ready to sign off on the permit once the as-built uh, are received. The contractor completed the installation of joint armor on the bridge and installed the final signs on November 1st. Scheduled completion is December of 2023. Next is the State Route 46 Gap Closure Segment 4C. Uh, they're going to convert two-lane conventional highway to four-lane facility. This is in Kern County on Route 46 uh, near Lost Hills. Um, construction is progressing. The project is 25% complete. The paving started uh, the week of October 30th, and it's scheduled to be completed July of 24. Next is the California Aqueduct 166, re, uh, one, 166 Bridge Rehabilitation. The pro project proposes to rehabilitate the existing bridge by retrofitting and fortifying the column support system that is currently sinking. It is anticipated that the bridge will need to be shut down to traffic for 90 days during construction in late 2024. The project is expected to RTL um, December 4th, but we're still waiting on uh, Department of Water Resources approval. Next is the Taft left turn channelization. Uh, we're installing left turn channelization on State Route 119 at the Kern Street Airport Road. Construction is progress progressing. Project is 85% complete. Uh, still pending electrical work and a change order at the corner of 119 and Kern Street. Uh, scheduled completion on that is November of 2023. Uh, next is the State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout. Uh, this project is at the intersection of 184 and Sunset near Weed Patch. Construction started on October 3rd, 2022 with full closure in the intersection. The roundabout is open to tra traffic punch list and electrical work is remaining, uh, expected to be completed in December. Uh, and then regarding the Sunset Arvin roundabouts, um, Caltrans public information has been informed and this is in the planning stages of a ribbon cutting, a press conference style setup and to do the ribbon cutting at the conclusion of the speakers and we're tentatively aiming for the second week of December. Next is the Morning Drive 3R Rehab. Uh, this project proposes to rehabilitate and bring the current standings of the existing roadway on State Route 184 between uh, just north of Eastern Edison Highway, Post Mile 8.5, and Chase Avenue, pay, uh, Post Mile 11.6. 11, 11 the project is awarded to Griffith Company, and we're waiting for contract approval. Expected construction to start uh, May of 2024. And finally, the Weed Patch Highway 3R Rehab. This project proposes to rehabilitate and bring to current standards the existing roadway on State Route 184 between 
Durmsmary Street and Breckenridge Road. The roadway rehabilitation and complete streets elements will be included. And this project is currently in ps and &E and right-of-way phase, and we're target to uh, certify the right-of-way in uh, September of 2024. Expected RTL is November of 2024. And I'll take any questions if you guys have any. Thank you, and welcome, Mr. Brock. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I have a question. Um, what's the process to get a crosswalk on 223 and Juana in Arvin? Sorry, can you say that again? A crosswalk between uh, 223 and Walnut Street in Arvin? Like, what's the process, or what are the steps to take? Uh, we, we can definitely look into it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll have uh, Michael follow up with you. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions for Mr. Brock? We're going to let you off easy. Thank you. <laughs> district 9, please. Good evening. Kirsten Helton, uh, District 9. I just have a few things for you tonight. Um, we have two important projects on State Route 14 that are coming up for construction this summer. The first is the Freeman Gulch Safety Improvement Project. This is on the uh, remaining two-lane segment of SR 14. So we're going to do safety improvements, including widening shoulders, adding other safety features, including rebel strips, medium barriers, widening the Freeman Gulch Bridge, and repairing and upgrading the drainages. Um, and this is kind of an interim project until such time as we move forward with the four lane in that area, but it should increase the safety significantly. The second is the Rosamond Rehab 2. It's a pavement rehabilitation project um, on 14 as well from the intersection of West Avenue A and Los Angeles County line to 1.4 miles south of Don Road or crossing. And so this is a, a pavement re rehabilitation project to upgrade the existing pavement on all the travel lanes on and on ramp, off ramps, shoulders, to extend the culverts, replace tra traffic signal systems, upgrade the guardrail, curb ramps, and other facilities within the, the project area. We have the uh, Last winter's emergency kern digouts and slab replacements project in construction is nearly complete. Um, our crews are finishing up the $3.1 million emergency project to repair multiple points of winter storm damage on the pavement of State Route 58 from just each of Mill Street to Business Route 58, just in time for this winter. Uh, the Boron Safety Roadside Rest Area, finally the replacement pumps have been delivered work is ongoing, so construction is anticipated for about three weeks. However, we don't have a, um, a reopening date at this time. There is, uh, we have a Ridge Crest sewer replacement project going on State Route 178 East between Gemstone Street and French Avenue. Um, crews are replacing a sewer line Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m., so there may be some delays for drivers in that area and intermittent closures. China Lake Naval Base repaving and traffic loop replacement is a project that's going on uh, installing traffic loops for, um, during the next week and it should be completed within two weeks. So, And then uh, as far as our project initiation documents, we have a Tehachapi CAP MPID outreach going on right now, so public can comment on this project through November 22nd. And then upcoming, we have the Cal City in a, uh, Boulevard Interchange project, which we'll be doing outreach to the public in December. And then the Golden Hills Cap M and Complete Streets PID outreach should be coming uh, probably in December as well. Those are all my items. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. I have a quick yes. question. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, on the 14 pavement rehab, Avenue A to Don Road, when's that estimated to start? Next summer. Next summer. And mm -hmm. you're gonna be doing the same thing you did on the northern part of that? Yes. Okay, so they're gonna be shutting down and back and forth, okay. Probably, yes. Thank you. Any other questions? District 9. Thank you. Let me off easy too, thank you. I'll let the record show that Supervisor Flores joined us during the Caltrans report and Executive Director's report.
Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. I have a handful of items on this uh, agenda. Uh, Ms. Napier, Mr. Ball, and I met, had the pleasure of meeting with the inter new interim city manager from California City, Michelle Martinez, a few weeks ago. Um, Ms. Martinez, up to a couple of days ago, was also a California Transportation Commission commissioner. She has, uh, she had and still has many connections in the transportation industry. industry. And uh, Kirsten, one, one of the issues that we talked about was the Cal City to Edwards connection um, that we've been working on for well over a decade now. It's still important to Kern Cog, the county, the city of California City, and, and there's been three fatalities in the last three years. We, we need to uh, figure out a way to move faster than the track we're on now. And you and I have talked about that. Uh, but it's encouraging to hear that you're going to start a document, but that's, that's not fast enough for us. Uh, over the past month, we've continued to have uh, meetings and collaboration about State Route 99 and State Route 58 with Caltrans and um, City of Bakersfield, Union Avenue, and um, the upcoming um, road diet project will be rebid. Uh, if that wasn't clear last month, it will be rebid for sure. Seventh Standard and 43 Roundabout um, has been resubmitted, uh, Supervisor Couch, as a CMAC project, but it is beyond our capacity to fund that unless the county or Shafter or Caltrans or a combination of any of those three um, agencies come up with significantly more money. And I'll be glad to talk more about that with you off offline if you want. Uh, it's uh, good to hear that the State Route 33 safety improvements, the shoulder improvements w that Kern Cog pushed for are coming to fruition. I heard from uh, several representatives from um, that represent the oil companies that have uh, workers that go out there regularly. They've noticed, as well as I, that traffic has significantly increased on 33 over the last 45 days that 46 has been closed and they are looking forward to uh, shoulders eventually coming on that section of 33. Those shoulders will, without a doubt, uh, save lives. Uh, just this um, afternoon we had our monthly State Route 46 meeting and I know Caleb touched on this but I wanted to expand, expand upon it a little bit. Um, I drove through uh, or was escorted through uh, the construction that's going on right now west of the community of Lost Hills that is not open to the public. That's why the road has been closed for approximately the last 45 days. I want to publicly acknowledge the great work that Caltrans and Granite Construction have been doing. Granite Construction has been working sun up to sun down seven days a week for the last 45 days and they're on schedule to <coughs> reopen uh, 46 this Sunday which will be <coughs> three days ahead of schedule so huge, huge task they're doing a great job the work looks great um, when the next time you drive through there um, just remember how it used to be mm -hmm. where you used to hold your breath and worry about someone <coughs> com coming across the, uh, the double yellow line and hitting you head on so great job, and it's uh, only taken 20 years. But <laughs> uh, Also, Caleb mentioned uh, that the section of widening on 46 through the community of Lost Hills was accepted just, uh, just yesterday. That's good news, too. Uh, continue to have uh, discussions with District 9, Caltrans District 9, and Caltrans District 6 about truck climbing lanes, location one and two. Um, staff has continued to uh, participate in the State <coughs> Route 119 stakeholder meetings. And if, if, you, if uh, anybody from the county or Taft or the city of Bakersfield are interested, what, what Caltrans and Kern Cog and other interested parties are trying to do is, is um, look at 119, especially the area um, around what is currently called Pumpkin Center. I think some of Pumpkin Center might actually be in Bakersfield, but 
many people still know it as Pumpkin Center, um, that uh, when the next project comes through there to put in um, curb and gutter and sidewalks, uh, that we, we manage 119 um, better than we did uh, Rosedale Highway, as an example. So we have a functioning road that serves the public well for the next um, several decades instead of having driveways every 10 feet and traffic lights and curbs that go in and out. So that the whole idea is let's plan it out now so our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren will have a nice road on 119 because we know that area will develop over the next uh, 20 to 30 years. <coughs> Finally, on this agenda, I uh, had a meeting on Monday with Caltrans District 5 about the project on State Route 46 at the Kern San Luis Obispo County line. And that I'm glad to say that that project is on schedule to be um, done with design in June of 2024 and should be under construction about one year from now. And that will be the last piece of 46. And there's only about less than 1,000 feet in Kern County on that project. Uh, and we will have everything from Interstate 5 to the San Luis Obispo County line done. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you for your help, especially Supervisor Couch. You know how you were part of that. And uh, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman, subject to any of your questions. Thank you. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, I will adjourn that meeting and open the Kern Council of Governments meeting. We have the same roll call with the addition of Supervisor Flores. Any public comments for the Kern Council of Governments meeting? Seeing none. Any public comments on the consent agenda? Seeing none, would any member like to remove an item on the consent agenda? Motion on consent. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. <coughs> Vasquez. Aye. Bob Smith. Yes. Jeff Flores. Yes. Raina. Yes. Prout. Yes. Crichton. Yes. Cryer. Yes. Crump. Yes. Blades. Aye. And Couch. Yes. Thank you, Executive Director's Report. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman and Board Members. Um, as most of you know, the deadline is coming up for our regional awards. That deadline is, I believe, the first week in December. And uh, if I can get three volunteers from the board members to, if needed, meet, uh, meet here uh, on December 21st. That's if, if needed. What will happen, as it usually happens, is uh, Ms. Napier and Ms. Campbell will review all the applications we receive, come up with a proposed slate, share it with those with that subcommittee. If they're okay with it, um, we won't necessarily need to meet, but if there's changes, additions, um, there may be an, a need to meet. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would ask you to solicit uh, if you can get three volunteers. Here we have volunteers. Mr. Couch. Mr. Crump. I can do it. Thank you, Ms. Prout. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now it is my pleasure to introduce our new financial services officer. Um, Greg, uh, Greg left. Uh, September 14th. Palomo, September. He wanted it to be low key. Uh, I'm very glad to, uh, and Ms. Napier was the one that. Uh, headed up the hiring process. I'm proud to say that we were very fortunate in um, getting 
Sarah from the county. I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, Supervisor Couch and <laughs> Supervisor Fl Flores, but she comes with several uh, decades of experience and she will do an outstanding job. Thank you and welcome. In your uh, folders this evening is the timeline covering November through February. And just, uh, bef I'll, I'll, I'll cover it with the next item. The regional award nomination packet. And just a reminder that ceremony will be the first Thursday in March. So Stay in place. if you um, want to start uh, thinking about blocking that time off or have some ideas for a nomination, please contact Ms. Campbell. Um, the Kern County Electric Vehicle Charging Station um, tracker by zip code. December Community Rides. That was brought up and talked about um, during public comment. And also uh, monthly community rides from November through December. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, uh, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Seeing none, we're adjourned.